Right, hello. So hopefully YouTube sends out a notification for this video because, as I said before, sometimes it sends notifications out for videos and streams, sometimes it doesn't. But this is quite an interesting one because um, we'll be talking a bit about the new camcorder I've ordered. Um, so just to say in advance to anybody that's donated at all, no matter how much it is, obviously bigger donations I really appreciate, but any donations are great. Um, it's all gone towards this new camcorder recently because I'm hoping that obviously with a new camcorder um, and everything, the video quality will be much, much better. Um, so if you're interested in the model of camcorder I've ordered, I will get you a link to the technical specs page up on it, actually, because that's a lot more interesting than um, actually just reading the advertisement page. Um, so let me get the full tech specifications one up. Here we go. So here we go. So it's a Canon Legeria, or however it's pronounced, Legria. But the G50 is basically the name of it. So there you go. But if you're interested, tell everybody. Um, so yeah, if you're interesting, it, interesting what camera I've ordered. This is the one I've ordered. So um, I've already got the SD card for it. I think it was an SDXC or it was either an SDXC or SDHC I got for it. But it's a 64 gig one I've um, bought. So um, yeah, that should be... Good. I'm not going to bother putting two cards in it, even though it has two slots, but a very good sensor in it. Basically, while I was looking at the other model of camcorder, it ended up only being about a hundred odd pounds more to get this one that is far, far better. So I was very pleased I actually realized that before I ordered the other one. Because one of the most impressive things of this one, obviously, this is a 4K one as well. How much I'll be filming in 4K, I don't know. Um, but it can film low light of 0.3 lux on this, which is very, very impressive. Um, and I was watching some videos where it had actually been filmed in low light. So to give you some idea, 0.3 lux is kind of similar to Gen 1 night vision. Um, so if you see footage of Gen 1 night vision, I think Gen 1 night vision is typically 0.1 lux to 0.4 lux. So, um, you know, that's quite an interesting thing. No, not, no snow here. Well, technically, there was snow last week on Thursday, but only in a very few places. Again, it's going to be um, completely, you know, varied on wherever you are. All right, thank you for the Christmas thing, but it's not for a month yet. But yeah, thank you to anybody that's donated. I really appreciate it. I mean, thank you to anybody that watches as well and subscribes. But yeah, obviously... It's a big investment getting a camcorder, spending like a grand on a camcorder, but I'm hoping, obviously, it will make the videos look far better. The main thing you should notice is you can actually see this on the webcam now. Right, so if you look at the webcam now, you notice there's grain, right, in the picture, even with two lights on. If I flick this light off, it will be more obvious. So see, there's even more grain now, right? Um, the great thing about this camcorder should be pretty much in any lighting situation, as long as I'm not going out and filming at night, you know, for practical videos, with ceiling lights, it will look really good because, again, it's got a very good low-light sensor. Um, but yeah, I'm also planning quite soon on buying um, some better editing software, basically probably the latest version of Sony Vegas, just basically so um, I've got something that can make more use of my processor, um, just because at the moment the issue is with older versions of Sony Vegas and Sony Movie Studio, they don't really have, I think it's 16 cores they go up to, Um and obviously where I'm on um, the, what's it, the uh, 3900X, that's 12 cores, 24 threads. So basically my CPU is bottlenecked by the software, not the other way around. That's all right, Mike. I've not been feeling great today. I was at work. Um, I managed all day at work, but I was feeling quite nauseous for a lot of today. Um, a lot, the majority of my videos, Musketeer Mike, are on, or Musketeer Mike, are on gas masks. So that's pointless, isn't it, Art? Do more videos on the things you do videos on. So, yeah. For the people who weren't paying attention, this stream is one where I'm sort of talking about the stuff I've ordered for the new videos coming up. Um, so it's not, I'm going to answer random questions. If I get time, I'll do that as well. Um, but, yeah. So for the people who didn't hear it at the beginning, if they came on, I've got a new camcorder ordered that should make the videos look far, far more professional. And again, in a couple of months, I can't really afford to just keep spending, you know, hundreds every now and then. Um, I'll be getting better editing software as well. 
But yeah, it's a massive step up from the handy cam. Uh, just to show you, I want to see if I can find a technical specification sheet for this one. Because if I can find a technical specification sheet for this one, it'd be quite interesting seeing just massively how much better the new camcorder will be. It should come Wednesday. Um, so let me search this model of Handycam and see if there's a full specification list. So this is a HDR CX240. Right. Let's just see if I can get the full speci the specification. Is it the 240 or the 240E? Or just a regular 240. Specs, right, because this is where it will be very interesting comparing them. Right, assuming this page has all the right specs on there, um, let me just link again before I link to this one of the... Um, and there's the... Um, I've tried a lot of the free editors, they're nowhere near as good as Sony Vegas. Because the thing is, like, again, I don't want to talk shit about, like, editors and stuff like that, because there are a lot of good things that, you know, are made for free. But in general, once you use something like Sony Vegas or the people who get into Adobe After Effects, the kind of, you know, cheap editing software isn't going to cut it. It's kind of like if you end up using Photoshop for ages, um, you know, Microsoft Paint isn't going to cut it. Paint.net is very good for, for my shitty level of, um, you know, image doing ability. Something like Paint.net is fine for me. But again, it's like, even though I don't use a lot of the features in Sony Vegas, I've got so familiar with it, and it's got so many good utilities, and you end up kind of wanting to use it. Oh, that sounds interesting, Rich. Go on eBay and buy a not GP5 filter for the GP5. There you go. All right, Peach. So, right, let's have a look at some of these specifications of my old handy cam. So, yeah, for those of you that don't know, this, this camcorder here, the one I've been using for like a couple of years now, probably like four years on YouTube, I should think, um, how the specs differ quite a bit. So, okay, let's go. I'm going to have to try and find the equivalent bits on each one. I'll hold this up here, so hopefully it's in frame. Um, right, so the Sony Handycam is 1920 by 1080, so it's 1080p, uh, 9.2 megapixels. Uh, the Canon one is it's 4k i know that let's actually have a look at where it gives the proper resolution data um it should somewhere have the actual uh, technical thing still image resolutions there where's the video one uh, here we go recording mode so the highest resolution one on here is 3840 by 2160 um you know video so the resolution is a lot higher 4k not 1080p um again i don't know how much use i'll make of that but i obviously want a camera that can do it um because especially if i film in 1080p it's a much higher quality 1080p does it have the megapixel on here let's have a look again because the things aren't always in the same place um let me just control f mega pixel no I suppose it's because probably megapixels quite an outdated term now, isn't it? In terms of um, lots of things don't really specify it. <clears throat> oh, uh, prox twenty one point fourteen. So twenty one point fourteen versus nine point two. So essentially over double the um, pixels on the thing. Uh, the Sony one had a twenty nine point eight millimeter lens. It's thirty five milli uh, thirty five millimeter, I think, on the um, Canon one I've ordered. Uh, minimum focusing distance on the Canon one is 10 millimeters, so that's very good. You can literally film a centimeter in front of it and it can focus. You can manually focus it as well, which is very good because I've never had a camcorder you can manually focus before. Um, does it mention a Lux on the Sony one? Because that will be interesting. Probably not, I'd imagine, because again, that wasn't something I ever saw ad advertised on old. Um, Things. The only weird thing is the Sony one actually has a higher optical zoom, but I never really make use of the full length of that. Um, and a higher quality camcorder filming, you know, a slightly less zoom is still going to be better than zooming in massively with something that's lower resolution. Um, If I go details, does it give any more? All right, yeah, good, it does. Um, right, does it mention the Lux on here? 
No. Okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, for anybody spamming the chat, they're just going to get a warning, um, obviously. Uh, you know, we're trying to talk about stuff, and I'd rather respond to people about the camcorder than people typing weird shit into the chat. But thanks for all the kind words, everybody. Yeah, that, that's fine, Whistle, I wasn't talking to you there, but... Uh, it's just... Um, yeah, no, it's just it's just in general when I try and do a stream where we talk about something, I don't like people just randomly going off on a tangent because all streams so far I've had people putting really weird stuff in the chat. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, let's have a look. I want to see if there's any other things I can specifically compare on them. Um, so in terms of frame rate, this is quite interesting. So the handy cam. Let's see where it says FPS. Is it, is it in frames a second? All right, so there's barely fucking shit information on this Sony one on the site. That's brilliant. Let's see if I can find the specs anywhere else. Because the only problem with trying to look up on Sony's site is as this is an old camcorder, obviously they don't have any info on their site anymore about this particular model. Um, I'll have a look at their slightly more modern one because they do have the specs on that apparently. So, you know, that will at least give me something close, even though this will be a better spec than the one I've actually got. Um... It just says low mux. Uh, oh, there we go. Low lux mode. Right, okay, but it doesn't tell you what. Um, yep, yeah, so normally this camcorder does, with the one I've got here, the one I've been using for videos, does six to three luxes. Um, the Canon one does 0 0.3. So, you know, significantly better than that in lighting. So whatever lighting I'm filming, it will just look better. Um, What other things? Frame rate is what I want to look at. Does it? It doesn't even mention it on the Sony side. That's really shit. Yeah, it doesn't have it as FPS or frames. So, brilliant. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure this one is 60 FPS on. Um, it might be 60 FPS 720p, 30 FPS 1080p. I can't remember. It might be 60 FPS 1080p. But regardless, that Canon one if you put it to the lowest resolution, can do 1,200 frames per second. So, um, yeah, to give you some idea, when I had that old slow motion camera I managed to break, it's more effective than the old slow motion camera. And because it works better in lower light conditions, in theory, the slow motion footage should look better. No, sadly, I don't have any muskets. Um, how many pounds? About a thousand. Um, so I've ordered it. So I said a big thank you to anybody that's donated recently because that's all gone towards the camcorder. And because a lot of people for a while said, get a better camcorder, get a better camcorder. But this is the first time I've seen one that I've actually been interested in, you know, from being a big step up. Because most camcorders around the price range of this old one I've had um, are barely better. And that's kind of the sad thing. As much as camera technology, I bought, um, I bought a cover on it, don't worry. I thought for that money, I am going to pay 50 quid for three years accidental damage and, you know, like mechanical fault cover. Um, because, you know, I'm because I've broken cameras before. Um, yeah, it's actually a professional filmmaker's camera, not a um, consumer camera, essentially. Um, but yeah, that was just because it ended up just being so much better that I thought I'm going to have to spend the money rather than. I don't think it comes with a tripod, but I've got a tripod, so it's not a problem because I use this on a tripod um, whenever I do videos. It's meant to have like very good steadying anyway, but I'll end up using it with a tripod most of the time, because why not? Um, why I'm interested in the microphone that comes with it, does it mention on here, mic? Image stabilizer with a dynamic, oh, that's saying dynamic, not mic. Uh, oh, audio adjustments built in, mic windscreen, mic attune, mic frequency response directionally. And it's also got an input jack for an additional mic. So very good. Um, yep. So again, better than this one, better inbuilt microphone. And you can upgrade it with an external microphone if you wanted to. Um, I think it obviously comes with some sort of warranty with it, Rich. But obviously the thing is, if I'm spending that much money, I want to get an extended warranty just because as well, accidental damage and... I don't want something that goes wrong a year and day after I've had it. When this camera started fucking up, weirdly enough, it was literally, I think, 10 days out of the warranty because, you know, of um, planned obsolescence, I guess, of electronics. Um, I'm trying to think of what the other really good features are with it. 
compared to my current one. Um, because there was quite a few things. It's pretty much better in every way, as far as I can tell. The only thing is, again, optical zoom on it isn't as good as this one. But, um, again, because it's a much higher quality optic anyway, less optical zoom on a higher quality optic is still probably going to end up looking better in, as a result anyway. No, I don't... Well, that's not the sort of thing I should answer, really, is it? Because it's sort of a security thing. Um, okay, this is interesting. Wait, the camcorder I've got coming is 875 grams, and that's with you know, the lens hood on, the battery and the car door in there. Does it mention grams on this one? Nope. Is it on there as G? Let's just look at weight. Oh, 190 grams. So, oh, weight including everything is 215 grams. So it weighs about four times the weight of this camcorder to give you an idea. But again, it's because it's an actual bigger, you know, like chunkier camcorder because it's a proper camcorder. Um... Yeah, if you're getting a new PC, I'd recommend it, Peach. With mine, it has kind of an extended warranty on, but mine's just kind of an extended warranty for, like, parts failure because I, I'm yet to ever brick a computer from doing stupid shit with it. So, you know, I, I'm, I don't really need an extended warranty for a computer, but for a camcorder. Um, what I'm going to do, Peach, is use the mic that comes with it first, see how good it is. It was going to be a step up from the internal mic on this one anyway, and then if need be, I'll buy a good external mic for it anyway. Yes, it will be better, but it's how much better it will be. Because um, I've got another camcorder that uses an external mic, and I find generally the external mic can cause a lot of problems. You know, especially if you don't quite get the mic in the wrong position, you find that the audio is just totally fucked in the video and you have to ADR it. Um, which particular one, Roberto? If you mean the big inflatable Polish suit, uh, Beast or sent it me for free to review. So he's got them on his eBay page, but I think they're about £400, because, again, it's not the simple NDC suit, so it's a hazmat suit. Um, anybody spamming the chat, I'm just going to warn you, you'll get a timeout and a block, because I really can't be bothered to deal with people spamming stupid shit in the chat when we're talking about important channel stuff. Thanks, Mike. Um, so, yeah. So, like, so, yeah. Part one is, um, sadly, I don't have a twat alert on my uh, thing, Tactical Pirate. I don't have a Nightbot. Um, but, yeah. So here's the thing. So, yeah, so step one, which is what I've done, is ordered a new camcorder. So I've paid for that and I said a big thank you to anybody that's donated recently. Um, as I said, I do basically two jobs now anyway. But so, yeah, working two jobs and um, order donations will cover that. But I, I just want to always say a big thank you to people that donate. because obviously it does mean a lot when there are people that sometimes donate quite a lot of money to, you know, say, get get stuff, get better camcorders, all that. Well, your five bucks waste alone has gone towards a thousand pound camcorder. So I'm sure when you start seeing the quality improvements in new camcorder, you know. Um, saying people who don't donate, I, don't, I have nothing against you, but you know, whatever. But anyway, so let's get back on the subject. So, OK, so step one, I've got the camcorder coming. So when that comes immediately, the video qualities will be a lot better. Obviously, I still have a lot of videos that have been scheduled in advance using this camcorder. Now and again, I film stuff on my phone camera, just because sometimes with a video, I can't really do it with a camcorder, but I can do it with a phone one. Right, so step one, camcorder's coming. As soon as you start seeing the videos of the camcorder, and the day it comes, I will probably do a test video and just upload it so everybody can see how good it will look. That's that. What I'm planning on doing quite soon is buying um, the full version of Sony Vegas on whatever the latest release is, and that's probably going to be about £200. Again, it's proper professional editing software. And as I was saying earlier in the stream, for the people who missed it, recently I bought my brand new PC. If you haven't seen it, there it is. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just move the webcam over. Oh, don't want cables. I'll move the webcam over. So yeah, if you haven't seen it, there's my new PC. You know, all shiny, nice case, but you know, much more professional, very modern, high-end PC. So where I've got that new PC, the problem is that it's bottlenecked actually by my editing software. Because the problem with Sony is, um, is in Sony Movie Studio and Sony Vegas, is that the old versions only, I think, work up to 16 cores. Let me fire it up and have a look, actually. Um, I've got both Vegas Pro on here. That's the old 64-bit one, because I bought that when it was an old obsolete version cheap. And Movie Studio. So, Movie Studio. Right, I'll launch both. Both Movie Studio and Vegas Pro. Um, 
for most people, um, movie studio is fine because Vegas doesn't offer too much more and it's a lot more expensive. Um, but the thing is, if I'm doing everything properly now, I might as well, you know, spend the cash and get the best things I can for doing videos with. And then everything is limited by my own ability of making shit videos. Not, you know, not the camcorder, not the audio quality, not, you know, not the editing software. It... Oh, that's cool. Yeah, Peach. The thing is, cases like that aren't too expensive now. And it's nice to see the computer inside because I remember ages ago, computer cases, you had to buy the really expensive models of cases to get like the transparent glass windows, whatever in them. Now that's like the standard thing. Because you remember when cases used to be just be like a black side panel? That's, that's a pretty old thing now, isn't it? Um, so anyway, so let's have a look. So if I go into, I've got my bottle cupping, cu uh, cutting video with weapon collector on now. I don't know if that's reflecting in my glasses. If you can see Mike in the little, oh, it's, um, that's movie studio there. Anyway, let me, it's, it's not important you seeing what's reflecting in the screen anyway. But so if I go into preferences uh, or properties, whatever it is, in Sony Movie Studio Platinum, which is the older one and the cheaper one. Um, I don't know if it shows up on here how many cores it can use, but as far as I'm aware, it might be an options preferences, actually. It definitely can't make good use out of my processor. Um, it can make full use of my 32 gigabyte RAM, but there's actually no point assigning it that much RAM because it bottlenecks on the RAM as well. Um, with this, does it mention how much of the processor it uses? Because I have a feeling it does not make very good use of my processor, this. Oh, yeah. Maximum number of rendering threads can't be set above 16. And again, I've got 24 threads on this processor. So, you know, that's not great, is it? And if I look at Sony Vegas, the older version of Sony Vegas, I think it's the exact same properties. Options, preferences. I can use all 32 gigs of my DDR4 RAM. But if I go to video, again, maximum number of processing threads can't be set above 16. I've got 24. So my hardware is better than the software, basically. So, um, that's cool, uh, Chris. So yeah, if, if you didn't hear earlier, if you've just come on, Chris, I, I, I spent like a grand, um, buying a better video camera. So, um, I'm going very professional now. I don't know if this will bite me in the ass or, um, it will end up being really good. I'm hoping it's obviously going to be really good. So I've said a big thank you to anybody that's donated. But um, So basically, anyway, what was I getting at? So, yeah. So I've got a much better camcorder coming. So obviously with this new camcorder, I can do 4K video if I want to. And any video I film, if it's 1080p, it will be higher frame rate. And, you know, regardless, it will be much better lighting and image quality, better sensor. Yeah, the thing is, Chris, it's like so much better. Because the issue I've had is for ages, I thought, right, when this eventually gives up the ghost, I will replace the handy cam with an equivalent model thing. The issue is, if you go for these consumer grade camcorders, like if you go for a Sony or Canon one, they are barely better for like the same money or slightly more now. Like, you know, adjusting for inflation. They've barely made these better. You know, like mobile phones get a lot better and like PC components get a lot better. Turns out camcorders don't, sadly. Um, I've actually had to go into like professional filmmaking camcorders, which again is an expense, but I think, you know, I'll probably make use of that considering I use a camcorder nearly every day at the moment. Um, yeah, the problem is, Chris, I found is I found unless you're going the SLR route, which again is perfect for some people, you can't really do that. Um, because what I found with a lot of the Sony and Canon stuff is you basically get these camcorders around 150 to 200 pounds. And then although you do have camcorders in the price range, a lot of them don't get much better until you go over that like grand threshold. And then all of a sudden you're into, you know, the professional camcorder range. And that's a shame because I really wish with a lot of technology, you know, depending on how much you spend, it would be nice if you know, a $400 or pound camcorder was, you know, twice as good as a 200 pound one. But sadly, you're paying for quite small increases. And then for whatever reason, it seems once you go into that, that next range up, you know, the quality increases something like, Whoop. to give you an idea, I was originally planning on getting an 850 pound Canon camcorder. The one I ended up buying, it was about a thousand pounds. It's about four times, slightly over four times better in low light filming, 
higher resolution, higher megapixel, um, much higher frame rates. It's literally a far, far better sensor. So it's kind of that thing of why would you spend 850 and then, you know, for me it was that. That's why I ended up going for this one and getting something that's basically really inferior to something that's a grand. Yeah. Let's say, Chris, what a lot of people suggested, and it works for a lot of people, because I'm not, I'm not totally dismissing it. For some people, it works really well, especially people that like doing regular photography, is buy a really nice DSLR that's quite competent at video. Then you can use it for photos and video. And that, for a lot of people, that would be fine. It's certainly a lot better than getting a camcorder like this, or certainly a lot better than that Chinese one I bought a while ago. Sorry to everybody who donated when I got that one. thought it was going to be really good, and it turned out to be shit. I can at least film infrared with that, so I can film 1080p infrared videos, but... Um, sadly survive that would rape my um sadly sorry to use a word like rape it's pretty horrible but you know that would destroy my 4g um you know because i don't i don't pay stupid money for my mobile stuff because i don't use a silly amount of data so unless i could find somewhere i can actually get a wi-fi signal that's a decent speed i could not stream from it um you know without destroying the battery um well, I'd hope Roberto soon, the fa my favourite camera will be the one I've ordered. Um, but yeah, so for a lot of people, DSLRs are a good choice. The reason I didn't want to go for a DSLR, um, I'm going to start off with that Phoenix, and then I'm going to upgrade to an external microphone if need be. I might even end up doing that. It's just I want to see how good it is, because again, I, I for ages I've been using the internal microphone on this one, which is just those two little bits there, and it's not awful, this one. Uh, not as good as my Blue Snowball there, but a lot better than a lot of camera microphones I've tried. So the Canon one, I'll test out what the microphone looks like, or sounds like, I should say. And then, you know, if need be, a month down the road, I'll buy a really good external mic. Because, what, like I said, I don't want to cheap out on this, because the problem I've had a lot of times with stuff for YouTube stuff is I'll buy one thing, and I'll buy something I think's reasonably priced, not expensive, with electronics. And then find it was a waste of money because it basically didn't work. Skrillex says I've been banned, but you haven't because you've just left the comment. Right, I've not got a Sony one coming. I've got a Canon one. Uh, the Canon, uh, what was the model name again? Canon HFG50. I'll link to it. I'm not getting a Sony one just because Sony really... Oops, not that one. Sony really pissed me off with this one with some of the proprietary bullshit they did with it. Um... Again, this isn't a bad camcorder for what it is. I've used this for years, and it's more than acceptable. But I've gone over before. This has a couple of kind of very big problems with it. And from most people I've talked to who are really into camcorders, they say Canon are a lot better than Sony. So, you know. Um, so, yeah. And that's the plan is camcorders coming Wednesday. If it's delivered on the date it's meant to come, I'll then get a video up of that pretty much straight away doing a 4K video. Um... Hopefully, within about a month of having a camcorder, I will buy the better editing software so I can actually render videos at a better speed, making full use of my new CPU and, you know, the new PC, not be bottlenecked by the editing software. And then, yeah, if need be, I'll get an external microphone for it and all that. Yeah, the thing is, I've had better experiences survive with Sony for the still cameras than the camcorders, because the weird thing is, as I said, although I've used this camcorder a lot, there's a lot of bullshit with this camcorder I've not had with my Sony bridge camera. Um, that'll be good, Peach. Let us know when it arrives. So, yeah, the thing is, it's expensive, like I've said. But the thing is, and I was saying this to Mike the other day when I visited him, um, that if I buy a good camcorder, right, no matter what I film with it, the video will look good for the people who are interested in gas masks, people who are interested in helmets. You know, no matter what the subjects of the video is done on, if I film it with that camcorder, it will look good. Um, the problem is obviously when I buy stuff like gas masks or whatever, you have to hope that people are interested in that particular one you get. I'll look into it a trouble man before buying anything, but as I said, I, I'm really into, um, Sony Vegas. Like I understand how to use it. I'm, I can kind of do stuff quickly and easily on it. So yeah, as much as I complain about Sony camcorders, I do like Sony Vegas. Um, just because, yeah, I, ooh, ooh, well, yeah, not the screen. Um, yes and no, Richard. Basically, what that problem is, 
Windows 10 being shit, uh, fucked loads of dedicated sound cards over. To get around that issue, I'm using my motherboard's onboard sound card, because that's what basically Microsoft expects everybody to do now. Um, so, yeah, to answer your question, have I fixed it only by doing a workaround, which completely avoids the thing? It's kind of like saying, um, you know, you buy one thing and you buy a really nice accessory for it, but the thing doesn't want your accessory to work, so you have to end up using the stock thing. Um, so anyway, if you were interested in the Sony camera I actually use when I take proper photos, not ones on thing, it's this bridge camera, the Cybershot. The reason I went for this is it's got a really good zoom, which is stabilized. Yeah. 63 times, is it? Yeah. 63 times optical zoom. This is, yeah, a very nice camera for just taking, you know, like decent shots. And that's the reason I never ended up getting um, a DSLR, really, was a lot of bridge cameras are very well priced if you know specifically what you want to get. And because I end up just generally when I take photos, doing wildlife kind of photos, this is easily good enough for that. And again, this is a camera I cannot fault. And there's a couple of reasons for that. It takes proper SD cards, which is one thing. So, you know, there's more market and competition for the cards. Um, and the batteries, interesting enough, right? So the camcorder and this camera use the same batteries. So I have quite a few of these rechargeable batteries. Um, so... Can anybody guess the problem who knows a bit about electronics? Why it is a problem that the, if I just open this so you can see, why the camera and the camcorder use the same type of battery. So same sort of milliamps and all that. Anybody be able to guess why it's um, a problem? Because it's quite obvious when you think about it, but it's something I didn't really think about until recently. And this camera's buggering anyway recently, um, where it's, you know, deciding, oh, it's going to drain batteries really fast, even if I replace battery. Yep, exactly. Power consumption. When I'm when I'm using this camera, it doesn't use much battery. So these batteries last ages. Yep. The camcorder, because you're filming all the time, it drains batteries way faster because you're obviously taking sound and video at like 30, 60 FPS, whatever it is, 1080p. You know, snapping, you can do video of this, but again, it's not optimized for video. It doesn't look great on it. I only ever use this video if I want to zoom in really close to something from far away and get a stabilized video shot. But yeah, so the issue is with the camcorder that it drains the batteries a lot faster and it's a Sony proprietary battery. And although there are third party batteries for it, which is what I ended up getting because you can get ones which are better milliamps for cheaper than the Sony ones, um, you know, it's not an ideal situation. And again, because I've had this camcorder for years now, constantly recharging it, using it, I think a lot of the electronics inside are probably just wearing out where the batteries discharge really quickly and the camera can be quite unreliable. Um, so, yeah. So that's that. So the other problem I said about this camcorder before, and I actually bitched about this when I did a review of it, even though people are always oh, complaining about that. Because if, if people are interested in buying this camcorder, they should know all the weird problems you'll uh, get into it. You're the only person I've seen complaining about it, Phoenix. So I'm assuming it's your internet. Try refreshing the page. <clears throat> so, Again, proprietary Sony bullshit. Um, so look at this, if it will focus on my webcam. So if that focuses, come on, come on. If I try and block my face out of the way, it might focus. Hang on. Where will this focus? All right, never mind. Right, so. So the problem with this is, Sony wants you to buy their M2 card, not a standard card. You're meant to buy the Sony M2 card for it. Right, so just, just to make it clear, if there was a really, really good camcorder that was better than the other camcorders and it used a kind of proprietary card, I wouldn't really care, right? If the cards were sensibly priced and it was just a one-off payment and you're going to get a good card. The issue is with this, um, as I've said before, is technically, yes, you can use a micro SD. Here's the problem. Micro SDs don't fit the slot very well. So when I try and put that in, it's now going to be really, really um, temperamental if this wants to work again properly, um, which is why I always take files off using the USB now, even though it's slower than um, doing the other thing. So yeah, so that's the main problems of it. This one, as much as otherwise it's a very good camcorder, the issues you'll run into is it drains the batteries really fast and it uses a proprietary battery. So no, you're not gonna get a lot of lifespan out of the battery. And it uses Sony proprietary cards because buy our cards, how dare you want to buy, you know, 
cards made by something like SanDisk. Um, yeah, exactly, a treble man. And I bet it... The thing is, I didn't know that, but that does not surprise me at some sort of bullshit like that. Um, well, yes, yeah, the thing is, whenever I'm not using that camcorder, I close it. But the problem is, it's still one of those camcorders, and Mike will attest to this when I came to visit him recently, because um, it's been getting worse and worse recently. I put one of my very rarely used batteries in it before I visited him last Tuesday. We fully charged the camcorder. Um, I fully charged the camcorder before I went to visit him. We got one video filmed before the battery got to like the point where it's going, oh no, I'm going to run out of battery any moment now. Um, so yeah. Other than that, it's a pretty good camcorder. The other problem I run into with it, which is really irritating, might be because of the um, card fitting issue. I'm not sure. But sometimes, and Mike saw this the previous time I visited it, him, um, you'll get this issue, right, where sometimes you're filming and it randomly comes up with some sort of buffer error. And the only way to fix it is to format your memory card and start again. So... I hope you didn't go on a day out somewhere and hoping to get a lot of footage, because if you've already filmed a load of shit on your memory card, well, guess what? If you want to film anything more, you're going to have to wipe everything you've done unless you brought a load more memory cards. Um, I assume you can still get film developed for old cameras, Iron Man. I don't know how many people bother with it anymore, but I'm sure it's still a thing. Just Yeah, so there's three big issues with that Sony camcorder. That's the only reason I kind of don't recommend it. And I mean, I recommend it for the fact that I, it's lasted me years without totally breaking down. And for the most part, it is good enough for my level of YouTube. But it's got to the stage now where I've just said, you know, fuck this. I, I want something good. Um, right. How many times has this happened to me? At one point, it was happening like every time I used the camera, where basically what I'd have to do is make sure I always took stuff off the camera, put on the PC, then formatted the card. That was the only way to get around it. Sometimes it will go months without doing it. And then other times it will start doing it every day, every other day again. Um, going back longer ago, Harvey, I just literally used compact cameras that could do 720p video. Um, you know, you know, before that they were 480p video, but I think all my videos are probably 720p on this channel. Um, but, you know, when compact cameras had a film function, again, it's not a good film function, but it works if you just want to do it as an amateur thing. Um but again, it's, I think, as the channel grows, it's upgrading with the growth of the channel. Any helmet fits for the GP5 Hampus, but if you want one that's a Soviet one, get an SSH-40 helmet or any of the other Soviet helmets. Um, I already do proper thumbnails. So what, what do you mean clickbait thumbnails? Because again, I'm sure I could make the thumbnails look better, but... That really depends on what you mean, because there's a lot of big channels which I think have shit thumbnails or they're clickbait. So, again, let's let's define what is a proper thumbnail. Can you tell me? Because I'd love to know. But the thing is, in all seriousness, if somebody could go, here's a really good example of thumbnails I like and show a consistent style of thumbnail, that might be something I consider. The issue is, a lot of time when people complain about the thumbnails, they'll say, like this channel does, and then it's just clickbait. And I'm not going to do that, because it's just basically lowering the quality. And I know, technically, with YouTube, yes. The right kind of clickbait might work well. Um, click, you know, work well, but it's not something I want to do. It's okay. No, just better quality. Okay, so define the better quality, please. No, I'm not a vegan. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is the thing. I mean, the thumbnails, if I just take a still from the video and edit them, will regardless look better on this new camcorder because it's higher resolution, right? And it works better in lower light conditions, so it will look better. But again, it also depends what you're into. Because if it's something that's subjective, there's no proper answer to that, is there? I have no idea what you're on about, Miles, but you sound like a fucking weirdo, so goodbye. Yeah. The thing is, Chris, I'll definitely say some of my videos have thumbnails I spend more time editing on than others. Let me have a look at some of my recent videos that have gone live, and I'll tell you which ones. Um, like the AFE one right today. It's cropped, the lighting isn't awful, it's got the French flag on there, and it has the name of the thing in the thing. So, yeah. The Mark 6 Visor one, again, is similar. Mark 6 Visor and readable text on a small thumbnail. Some of them aren't as good as that, 
But again, it kind of depends on what the video is. Because the issue I've had is, I know after I filmed a video, I could t literally get a good camera, take a photograph of something, and edit that as the thumbnail. But again, I don't like putting something in the as the thumbnail which isn't in the video. To me, that seems like false advertising. AMD 3900X, Phoenix. Yeah, sadly survived. That used to be a good way of getting YouTube views back in the day, but I think Google have made a thing about that now, haven't they? Which is a bit discriminatory towards women, I guess. Uh, it'll be fine to fully submerge, but if you want to be really careful, yes, you can pat wash it, Brian. Oh, sorry, pat wash it. So, yeah, like I was saying earlier, though, Phoenix, the problem is because it's a 12 core, 24 thread processor or, you know, 12 physical core, 24 logical core, however you want to look at it, or 24 cores total, 12 physical, 12 logical, can't remember how they do it. The point is that the total core count of my processor is way higher than my current version of Sony Vegas can make use of. Actually, if I do DX Diag, it might tell me my total number of cores full stop as far as can be used for stuff on a computer. Um... So let's see, system, 12 core, pro so it's 24 CPU, yeah. So 12 physical cores, I guess 12 logical cores, 24 CPU total, 3.8 gigahertz. I can overclock that to 4.1, all right, but I'm just going back to 3.8 at the moment because, again, I can't even make use of all my cores with a lot of software, so what's the point in even overclocking it by very much? So, yeah, but as I was saying, the problem is, Sony Vegas, the version I've got, and the older movie studio I had, which is even more bottlenecked, because if I render the same, literally the same project on each on the same render settings, it always renders faster on the uh, more recent version of Sony Vegas I've got. But again, that's still an obsolete old version, and I got it for cheap because it was an older version. The issue is now, again, I'm I'm only making use of like 66% of my processor or something. I'm sure it maths, but if I've got 24 threads and it's only able to use 16 of those, you know, regardless, I've got eight cores it's not using, which is a lot of wasted potential when you've got a good processor. And again, it'd be even worse for people who have bought even higher end CPUs than mine, where they have even more threads and cores. And yeah, good luck because your editor's bottlenecks. That's definitely the reason I want to get a better editor. Yeah, certainly waste alone. I do out on there where um, it's not really interrupting the flow of anything. I don't mind on there. The thing is, right, the sad thing is, Richard, one of my most viewed videos, month after month, is Top 10 Scariest Gas Masks. I have nothing against that video. It took me quite a long time to make. Bart filmed it with his nice DS, oh, with a really nice lens on it, um, <clears throat> you know, at the time. So it was a slightly higher quality than ones on my normal Sony camcorder. And he put a nice filter over the lens as well. It wasn't a digital filter we did. It was actually a physical filter over the lens. So the thing is with that video... It's not like I didn't put effort into it or, you know, we didn't put effort into making it. Um, the issue is it kind of does annoy me when something with a click, kind of clickbaity title like that does better than videos I spend like 40 minutes making. All right. I'll see you away, Salona, if you're off for a bit. No, the GP5 by a mile is not one of my worst gas masks. It's very basic, but it's simple and basic. It works. My worst gas mask by a fucking mile is the... Chinese pewter mask, whatever it's called. The one that I literally could not recommend to anyone because I think it would get you killed if you ever relied on it. Right. Right. Firstly, there is not one military standard, uh, Rafael, uh, or Raphael, sorry, every name's pronounced, <coughs> of um, military filters. If you look at kind of older NBC filters, and they're normally called CBRN filters now, they don't always meet the same standards. So... The thing is, an ABEC filter actually at least tells you what it is, because each of the letters stands for something, and ABEC will have a number on it. So let's say you have ABEC 1 P3. That is organic vapor, inorganic vapor, acidic vapor, and ammonia vapor rated to a rating of 1. The higher the number, the better. So like with P3, how you can have P1, P2, P3. P3 is the best of those. With the other kind of vapors, uh, let me see if I can demonstrate this. 
Again, you have to kind of be careful because I don't know always if these meet like an international standard, you know, so one company could rate their filter higher than it is. So this one, this Chinese filter, and you'll notice it's a big coffee can. This is specifically for acidic vapor. It's got a very basic particulate filter in, but the E3, uh, it's not a games convention on this. It is that it's acidic gas rating free, which is very good. So you can get ABEC filters, which are like ABEC one or whatever. And if it had an E1 rating, this is much better than, um, you know, an E1. So the reason I like ABEC filters is unless you can find the technical specs on like a website from the manufacturer of a certain model of military filter, um, you don't actually know how effective they are. And one of the things in the Cold War, and again, these are all expired filters anyway, but lots of nations didn't actually... Um, have filters that offered ammonia protection, so they'd only technically be ABE filters. Um, so, um, yeah, let's say you buy any brand like that's from a decent company, it's sealed properly, and it's in date. We'll just say all the things, you know, to cover ourselves. Let's say you buy an ABEC2 P3 filter, and it's not a military filter, it's just an ABEC2 P3, you know, like industry filter can be used for whatever. I would kind of trust that more than most military filters, unless they were very specific, good branded military filters. Because the thing is, yes, some military filters will cover more things, but a lot won't. A lot will literally meet the minimum standards because it's cheaper. So um, personally, yeah, at least with an ABEC thing, it's kind of like an international standard. Just saying it's a CBRN filter isn't. I know there's like that NIOSH thing, is it N-I-O-S-H? Um, and I think stuff that's NIOSH CBRN rated does meet a minimum standard, and that's like quite a good standard. The issue is obviously anybody can say, oh, this is a CBRN filter, which doesn't mean it, you know, meets different international standards. Literally UK, eBay, specific ocean, I think would be your best bet. Right. Anyway, Rafael, I'm, I'm glad that's answered your question, because that's kind of the best way I can explain it without kind of going off on a tangent that takes ages and then a lot of it is still down to opinion even though you know you can factually measure how much a filter stops the issue is you know like some military cbrn filters are certainly better than others and like say even we had filters rated to a neosh standard they can go above and beyond that so two different military cbrn filters are not just the same the other issue of cbrn filters you'll have is generally you're not going to buy them unless they're expired that's not always the case because obviously there is corruption and sometimes stuff perfectly legally gets sold in the surplus market. But let's say with like Polish FB5 filters, for example, here's one that's in date. It runs out in 2022. Technically, I guess the Polish government wouldn't have sold that officially, you know, because if something's still in its expiry date, it's very unlikely you'll get military surplus, you know, because it, then it's not really surplus, is it? Um, whereas with industry filters, obviously, you're buying them as a consumer in more of a sense because they are sold to civilians, not to um, militaries. The problem most people will have, I was saying, is like, again, even if it's a very good rated CBRN filter, generally you can only buy them if you're expired, and when you buy them expired, there's no guarantee how well it's going to work. Yeah, don't forget to like the stream, everybody. It does help me out. Um, a lot of the time, but a lot of the Hong Kong stuff survives is just kind of really stupid shit, isn't it? Where, um, as in, the thing is, I have nothing against people peacefully protesting in Hong Kong, but as, as that's been brought up by a lot of people a lot of times in these streams, there's a lot of people that are very violently doing stuff in Hong Kong, um, that, you know, does not help anybody. You know, like the videos where you see people trying to shoot the police or whatever and all that sort of shit which I'm never going to condone, you know, basically, no matter where it is in the world, I'm not going to condone people, like, shooting at the cops, even if you might say the cops are too brutal or whatever as riot police. You know, I have no... Like, let's say there's a person who's peacefully, peacefully protesting, they bring a gas mask with them or whatever, because they don't want to get tear gas and they're peacefully protesting. I have no problem with people like that whatsoever, or power to them, right? Um, the issue is, when you see people essentially rioting you know, doing criminal activity, I don't really have any sympathy for them. So while it's kind of interesting seeing what they're geared up with, a lot of these people are idiots. Um, well, FP5s, I think, are coming out of service now. 
being replaced, I think, by the FP6, but I've not seen any FP6 yet, but, so I can't really comment on the validity of that. But yeah, so the thing is, if Poland fully replaced all the FP5 filters with FP6 filters, then you'd expect the FP5 filters to probably hit the surplus market or, you know, go somewhere else. Um, against radiation, yes, Harvey, because with radiation, the only protection you get from a standard filter is the fact it blocks particulates. It's not going to give you shit protection against gamma. Um, basically, to explain that, so alpha radiation or beta particles, let's say you have irradiated particulates, right? Like radioactive dust or smoke. What a filter does is it blocks you from inhaling it and it really fucking up your insides if it gets in you. I bet YouTube's going to demonetize this stream now the amount of swearing I've done in it. Um, a gas mask and a filter are going to do nothing to protect you from gamma radiation. A really thick rubber mask is going to cut down the amount of beta radiation that comes through, but gamma is going to get you regardless. Because gamma, gamma and X-rays are really ionizing stuff, you know, that you need lead or, like, thick steel shielding to stop. Um, you know, if you look at the Chernobyl liquidators that had bits of lead strapped to them, that is to stop gamma. You literally need kind of more, like... The thing is, that Polish plate carrier I've got, we're not doing some tests on that. The plate combined with the Kevlar and the liner was blocking low-power gamma sources from getting through completely. And even high-power beta sources from getting through. If you're outside the RBMK, you know, number four reactor after it exploded at Chernobyl, it's still probably not going to be enough protection to protect what's under the plate. Um, but yeah, hopefully that kind of explains a bit about what masks do and don't protect you from when it comes to radiation. Because you get some people, oh, it completely protects you from fallout. Well, it protects you from certain aspects, like the most dangerous aspects of fallout, inhaling it and having it destroy you internally. It doesn't protect you from powerful external sources. Um... But yeah, that, that's the thing, Chris, isn't it? Ooh, it's the world's best gas mask because somebody trying to sell them has said so. Generally, a good piece of advice I will give to anybody all across the world, I think, no matter what it is, and maybe this applies more to surplus sellers than other people, but, you know, is that do not take the company's word for it that is selling you something or the shop selling you something on the quality of a product. Please read independent reviews from as many sources as possible Right, so let's just go for surplus. Let's say you're interested in the gas mask. If I've done a video on it, see what I think. If any of the other YouTubers or people on like Reddit or, um, you know, the gas mask Discord have put their opinions on it, read everybody's different opinions. See, come to your own conclusion, basically. The problem is, do not believe a surplus seller saying GP5, world's best gas mask, filter does not contain asbestos, you know, that kind of thing. Like... In, again, in some countries, we do have regulations on, like, TV advertising, what sellers can and can't say about their product on there. Um, the issue is, that doesn't really apply to eBay listings, and even if it did, you're not really going to stop something. Um, yeah, false advertising is illegal, but the problem is, if you look up a lot of the definitions of false advertising, you'll find the internet has really fall, fallen short of where, you know, false advertising can be applied and how it can be applied and all that. And even then, you still get a lot of shitty things that go on with TV advertising where, you know, they imply something, but because it's implied in such a way where not everybody watching the advert might, you know, think that, they can get away with it. Um, and you, you can watch a lot of... Ad a good example of this with advertising, um, have you seen the amount of deodorant or, um, like, perfume aftershave adverts that basically say you'll get laid if you wear this? That's, it's not going to work that simply, is it? But, I mean, if you were a really sm uh, sweaty, smelly bastard, you probably wouldn't be getting laid. But if you're going to put whatever brand of deodorant on, it's not going to make up if you've got shit social skills, you have horrible deformities or something like that. Um, so, yeah, you know, you get the point. But you, people can still put bloody um, adverts on. There was something that really made me laugh, and I hope this guy succeeded. I don't know if he did. There was an Indian guy who said he was suing, um, like, Axe or whatever the name of it is, Axe or Lynx or whatever the brand of deodorant was, because he said, I've been watching your adverts for years. They tell me I'll get laid. I have not got laid since buying your deodorant. I, I hope you won that court case. Um, but, you know, the thing is, I'm kind of of the opinion where I don't think advertisers should be stopped from kind of making any claims about the product. We're going off a very strange tangent here, aren't we? But the most important thing is, 
don't buy something based on the advertising. Watch independent reviews, kind of work out, you know, where somebody might stand. Because again, people always have opinions. And even when you try and be subjective, your opinion's still probably going to try and come through a bit. You know, get a mixed consensus from different reviewers. Same with news sources, right? Don't look on, if you're interested in news, don't look on, whatever you do, do not look on just one news site and take their word as gospel. Uh, go on different news websites of different, you know, leaning political opinions funded by different groups, whatever. Read lots of different opinion pieces, whatever on a thing you're interested in. Try and get a consensus of what the real story might be. Um, go on eBay and type in NBC suit. There you go. That, that's actually how easy it is. Um, aesthetics wise, maybe the Fashida F2 or the Avon CT12 FM12. I just kind of like that kind of two eyepiece aesthetic with, you know, um, the kind of circular mouth bit there. S6 is very aesthetic as well. Yeah, exactly, Richard. This is the thing, especially with stuff like that, where you can chronograph measure it and stuff like that. That is where you can really see if it's good or not, can't you? Because that's kind of like an actual scientific test you can put it with. The problem with a lot, a lot of products is when they do come down to opinions, which is subjective, it's much, much harder to actually kind of have a, you know, almost like solid scientific answer of how good it is. That's a very weird channel name you've got there, I Love Weapons and Stuff 93. To completely up to you. If it suits you, get one. If not, don't. What's my favourite gun from the Soviet Union? Probably the AK-74. Um, the problem is, Joshua, I don't really have any um, experience with using rebreathers, like actually functioning using rebreathers with the scrubber unit or using air tank masks. So I really can't advise you on much other than check there's not any rips in the rubber rubber, and there's not, you know, like an open valve somewhere. Right. Thank you, Harvey. But uh, I'm not sure what you're quite asking there, Mike G. But if you're saying if you buy a if you buy a modern Chinese coffee can filter, they'll be safe because China does not use asbestos anymore in making filters. If somebody wanted to donate me a free filter like this, I would cut it open, use a microscope, and have a look at exactly what I can find inside. The, the problem is I'm not going to do that with this functional filter. But if you look at the bottom of this filter, or the, uh, I'll use the bottom because it's easier to show. Again, the lighting's not going to be good enough on there. If I hold that up to the webcam, what you can hopefully see, and I've done this with the microscope as well, but I've not done a video of it, you can see that the particulate layer they use in there is very basic. It's more like a cotton pad. If you look at something like a GP5 filter that uses asbestos as part of its particulate mix, it has a kind of very different appearance to it. Oh, interesting enough, I'll, sh I'll show you something interesting now. Let me show you something. All right, here's my PMK3. I arrived the other day, I'm not around to doing a video on it yet. And I mean, I've not even filmed a video on it yet, not as in. I've done a video, it's not live yet, I've not even done a video on it yet, right, so what I'm going to show you here isn't so much on the mask itself, it's on the filter. Now, I would very much imagine the PMK3 filter is safe, I'm pretty sure it's PMK3, not the PMK2, isn't it, it's got the floor about it and everything. Um, but anyway, it, it's got that weird kind of proprietary filter thing they did with it. I already said hampers eBay, if you ask one more time you're getting blocked just because I think you're doing it to take piss. Right, if you're not going to use eBay, I can't help you. Right, so, here's the thing. We'll open up this filter, and I don't know how well this will show on webcam, but here's the interesting thing. I might need to get a flashlight to show this properly, even though I don't know if the webcam will pick it up. Let me just hold it like this. So whether or not this will show on the camera, I don't know. But what you can see from here, and you can definitely see if this is your eye if you hold it up to a good light source. I, I don't think it's going to show, unfortunately. But... That's the IR light, not the UV light. The UV light's there. I don't know under UV if it will show up on the camera very well. Let me have a look. Oh, wait, no, that's a laser pen. Never mind. I don't know where my UV torch is off the top of my head. 
Actually, I can use the light, can't I, on my uh, phone? That work. Like, I never used a flashlight on there. I always forget that it's quite a handy function. It's nowhere near as good as an actual proper flashlight. Right, so hopefully I can demonstrate this on the camera if I get the lighting at the right angle, which is easier said than done, as always. But what we're looking at is the bit inside the filter there, if I can get the light on it. The thing. Right, I don't know if I can show it very well on camera. But anyway, the point I'm making is if you look at a modern PMK3 filter under good lighting, you can easily see it's um, a clear kind of paper HEPA filter in there. If you compare this to the GP7 filters, the GP5 filters, you know, any of the Soviet era filters that looked kind of like this design. Um, so I said eBay hampers. Um, you can clearly see it's a different kind of HEPA filter. Now, what Hype was saying, which makes perfect sense, is that when you've actually invested in the industrial capacity um, you know to make paper heaper filters you are not going to make asbestos filters for it anymore because it costs you more money to do that and um, you know it's just all around less efficient so you get a less efficient filter that costs more to make nobody would ever do that the thing is with products is again if you could scam people on the product you know, maybe you would spend less money making something to make a higher up market. The problem is that when you can physically see in the product they're using the higher quality component, nobody's going to use asbestos anymore, for like paper filters, because once you've got the machine and tooling in place that you can literally turn paper into a more efficient filter than the old asbestos filters, it's quite clear why they're safe. Oh, can you just put duct tape on that, Joshua? Would that actually work? Right, as I have already said, Mike, when I answered you, Right, TF1 gas mask, I already have one. Chinese coffee can filter, I already have one. There is your answer. I don't need to buy one from where, whatever bang it is, because it sounds like a porn site, to be honest, but um, I don't need to buy one from there because I've already got the components, or the, the mask and the filter. It might not be the same mask version of the TF1, might not be the same filter, but I've already got it. There you go. Right, the stream's gone over an hour, so I'll finish it. At least I'm not feeling as nauseous as what it was earlier, because um, People that missed it, I was feeling quite ill at work today. We just had one of those days where I've like not had an appetite, you know, felt a bit lightheaded and sick most of the day. I don't know if I um, inhaled any fumes at work or if it was just a day of, you know, being a bit ill. But yeah, it does, doesn't it, GP5? Um, I'm sure there is some sort of fireproof tape, Joshua, you can actually buy. If you look on Amazon, I'm sure that is a thing. Can you get like some sort of foil tape, like, you know, those um, heat suits, you know, like the foil heat suits that reflect heat? Can you get a tape that's kind of just got that on the outside? I know in theory, if there's enough heat, the adhesive on the tape might melt and then the tape would fall off. But I'm sure there is some way you can get tape that is not going to easily come off. From that. Yeah, volcano suit. Again, Joshua has said it. I am not in any way. I wouldn't even claim to be an expert on surplus gas masks because I, I think that takes the piss out of anybody that's a lot more qualified than me and there are certainly people with much better you know what do you call it like knowledge experience collections blah 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 blah, blah than me on surplus gas masks but like I said I am completely not qualified to talk to you at all about um positive pressure um other than you know using an electric pump with um a mask as in you know filters attached to a battery unit that sucks through air yeah so again do not listen to me, Joshua, if you're um, wanting. I can give you my opinion, but there, I might know more than a random person on the street about how, um, you know, masks work with air tanks and all that. But certainly do not really listen to me on it, because as I said, I could end up giving you very dangerous advice if I want to give, you know, if I try to give you advice on that. So I'm not going to really do it. It's the same reason when I do videos on rebreathers that I do every now and again. I've got another rebreather to do a video on quite soon. Um, I always say to people, look, if you're not trained with rebreathers, especially even more so with surplus rebreathers, do not fucking pull the pin and breathe through it, because you could die. You know. All right, see ya. See ya, Joshua Froff. Yeah, talk, talk to somebody qualified. That, that's the best option. Um, no, don't go on Reddit and ask questions. It doesn't matter what the Reddit is. I would not trust asking literally any forum in the world, Reddit or anything like that, serious questions you know that could get you killed because it is just not a good idea um talk to somebody you can actually speak to in real life who has the proper 
safety qualifications to be able to instruct you on it. The amount of idiots I've seen online over the years, you know, and I've probably said some stupid shit on YouTube over the years. Um, but, you know, the amount of forum posts I've seen where people literally say things that could get people, you know, killed, severely injured or stuff like that because some idiot thinks he's smart enough, even though he has no knowledge of something, to try and be authoritative. Yeah, exactly. You might as well ask a psychic or a clairvoyant or something like that. Why don't you ask a random number generator? Because, you know, if, if you're going down that route of something that could get you killed if you do the wrong thing. A good example of this, and I'm not going to go into what the chemical is because I don't want to encourage anybody to try it for a science experiment and fucking kill themselves or other people, is phosgene gas. Phosgene being the deadliest of the World War One gases. Phosgene can be made accidentally if certain chemicals heat over a certain point, and it's actually a very low boiling point. I have seen people online, and I think Richard has said about this a few times, on welding forums, where people have said, oh, just spray a certain chemical, you know, like certain things that contain certain chemicals, and then just weld it. If you do that, the welding flame will heat the uh, chemical you've, you know, put on there, which I'm not going to mention what these chemicals are. I know, but I'm not going to mention it, because, like I said, I do not want to encourage people to do this. Again, people can look it up if they really want to. It will boil to a point very easily. It will make phosgene gas, and it is really fucking deadly, especially if you are just doing something with a welder in your garden or whatever. You know, so. You know. So, yeah, I like Zippo lighters. If I'll get back to that, but... I do lighter videos every now and then. When I get my new 4K camera, I'll definitely do a 4K lighter video. Why not? Um, but yeah, there'll be another one eventually, Radio Kid. Just watch. Wait and watch. Um, click on it when you see the lighter video you're interested in watching. If not, watch my backlog of lighter videos. Um, like I said, I will go off in a minute anyway. But yeah, this is just a general thing to online safety things. If you are ever doing anything that could have really serious health complications, and the thing is, yeah, exactly, Richard. That's the thing I've said to people before. It's like we we're saying about homemade welders, wasn't it? When people don't, not welders, homemade, like we we're saying gas forges, wasn't it? It's that sort of thing. There is certain stuff that is really fucking dangerous if you do not know what you're doing with it. Um, no, I used to, Harvey. I quit years ago. Um, I vape, but I still don't even do that every day now. Um, I haven't got any new knives to do any reviews on, Alexander. Um, I am going to do an updated EDC video fairly soon. I keep meaning to do that and never getting around to it. Um, but anyway, so I just want to try and finish this point off before I finish the stream, because potentially if I save somebody's life by saying this, it's really worth it. There are some things that, you know, you can bodge and it might work. There are some things theoretically, you know, it's probably not going to happen, but if you took bad advice on it, it might get you killed. There is some stuff that if you really do not do everything properly, it will get you killed. Right. So like we're saying, like Richard was saying, you really don't want to mess around with air systems, you know, like oxygen tanks and things like that, unless you really have the proper qualifications to do it or you're really willing to risk it. You know, because the thing is, because I'm, as I said, I'm quite a libertarian type person. I think if as long as it's not going to endanger anybody else, if somebody wants to kill themselves, you know, for mental health reasons, or whatever, you know, people should get help and all that, but the thing is, like with stuff like that, is if somebody ends up killing themselves and not harming anybody else through their own stupidity, you know, like stuff shouldn't be banned or whatever because they were stupid, you know, and all that sort of stuff. The problem is, the thing I really have an issue with, mm, delicious Strontium 90. Yeah. I've taken the risk of Strontium 90. I do not regret it. Um, but I would never tell anybody to mess about with Strontium-90 if they have no fucking clue what it is, um, you know. So, but yeah, you're right there, you're big at Um But yeah, so, here's the thing. So, like I said, if people, you know, I think, like I said, because I'm a person that's very much, especially if somebody has no quality of life, if they want to kill themselves, you know, I, I definitely cannot understand people who are against assisted dying for severely disabled or terminally ill people anyway. Who want to die in a more humane way than slowly, you know, dying from a horrible disease. I think for most people that makes logical sense. 
then of course you can take it to a bit more of a further libertarian argument where you're saying basically everybody should have the right to terminate their own life if they want to you know and there's lots of sports and things you can do where you basically have to sign a disclaimer saying it's dangerous to your health you know and you might die doing it so in in our society we can kind of accept that and you know generally i'm of the opinion anything between consensual adults is basically fine as long as you know it's adults and it's consensual you know it's i think that's just kind of a sensible mindset to have but so now let's get to the point i want to get at there is certain things where if you are going to kill other people as well as yourself due to your own fucking stupidity you should never do it and these are the things where i really do have a problem where people have no idea what they're talking about well, i mean what would be even worse is if they do know it's dangerous and they tell people to do it anyway claiming it's not um you know, and a genuine be disingenuous with it. Um, you know, where they give people advice that can get them killed, especially if it will get other people killed, not just the person doing it, but you know, it could potentially kill lots of other people or injure other people, you know, ruin people's lives. I generally think people should probably be imprisoned or sued for that. And again, I'm not somebody who is very keen on the idea of people going to prison for saying mean things on the internet. But I think if people literally hand out advice online, that could get people killed from, you know, very poor information or stuff they do not understand. The answer is yes and no, Harvey. It's hard to explain. I've got a decent airsoft AEG, and it's literally right here. I, I'm not going to get out, but I will show you. See that carrier there? That is my airsoft AEG in there. Um, but no, I don't do airsoft for reasons I've gone into before. But anyway, well. I'll get back to my point and then I'll finish the video because I want to wrap this up. It's been on like 11 minutes longer than I was planning on doing the video, but you know, I want to wrap up this point. So I think it's an important point. I'm certainly not in favor of people who say mean things being arrested and put in prison or fined or having their careers ruined. The thing is, my opinion on freedom of speech is basically people should be allowed to say things. If they say things that offend people and it fucks them over, not from a sense of being arrested, but let's say they say something racist online or whatever. And people say, I don't want to employ that person, you know, or the company wants to fire you, you work for, because they don't want somebody working for them who's, you know, going to make their company look bad. But I think the company has every right to do that, you know. Yeah, exactly. So it's again, it's like if somebody said it's safe to drink methylated spirit. No, it bloody isn't, you know. Um, it's kind of not freedom from consequences you know i don't know how hard it's it's a point a lot of people can't seem to get because they seem to think you have to be 100 percent free speech or you have to be like zero percent free speech uh, i do two jobs harvey they're about 50 50. i mean if you add up donations that people give me of youtube it works out more than my job yeah but yeah i mean it's certainly if you did it that you know comes into will bring the company into bad disregard then yes i mean there's lots of very strange lines now with social media and this is one of the reasons i don't like using social media where if you put on your social media who your employer is and then on your social media that same social media page you know you say racist things online i think that is kind of bringing the company into you know disrepute but there's there's a lot of places where i can understand the iffiness of it and i'm saying i don't have the answer to this but anyway the point i'm getting back to is that I think if you are literally giving people advice online that is going to get people killed, right? And not just you. Yeah, that's exactly what I was trying to get out most magic. If if you are literally giving advice online, either disingenuously, because you are a prick and you know it's going to end badly, or, you know, you are doing it because you are not qualified to speak on a subject that is very technical. Um, and I said, like, when I, when I do videos on gas masks, it's kind of a a very respirators with filters are quite beginning subject and i will say that i am basing my knowledge on lots of knowledge you can read from reputable sources of various places and even then take it with a pinch of salt please and look at other videos but yeah when it comes to things like rebreathers when it comes to things like air tank systems where it is so easy to kill yourself other people or do massive harm and you know other things to even bigger degrees than that like where we we're talking about phosgene gas earlier this is where I really do have a problem with people, you know, online basically, go, oh, just do this, you know, where it will actually injure or kill not just one person, you know, multiple people. Um, you know, 
I don't know what these sort of things are. I mean, if you use a kettle to boil water, I don't have a problem with it. But if it's like sticking live electrical wires into water, yes. Um, again, I don't want to keep dragging the stream out because, as I said, I was trying to finish this up. But you do bring up good points. But the point I'm getting at, and I think Richard has brought up very good times before on streams when people are like, oh, I'm going to use a rebreather. I'm going to use a rebreather. It's at your own risk, right? I don't know. And the thing is, if you're a kid, I don't think you should actually be allowed to use a rebreather. We don't let children drive. Um, you know, we don't let children drink alcohol. We don't let children do lots of certain types of drugs. You know, you don't let how children have sex. There's lots of things that children aren't allowed to do till they're 16, 18, 21, you know, in different countries because it's to protect them. If you are somehow telling children to do things which could easily kill them online, you should be in prison for that, you know. But, um, you know, so. That, that's my, kind of my point on that. And the point I think this came from is with air tank and rebreather systems, where we got back to the thing, do not go on a Reddit, no matter how professional this Reddit might be or any other forum. And this isn't a dig at like the gas mask Reddit or anything like that. This is not a new drama thing. This is just, I think, common sense. Only get information like that from somebody who is genuinely qualified and somebody who can be properly held responsible you know, if something bad happens. Um, like, if I had to take a course on using air systems safely, I would want it done by somebody licensed to do it, or like the fire brigade. I would not want to ask somebody on an internet forum where they're pretty much anonymous. Something that could get me killed or cause serious problems. Is this all this not okay? Because the amount of stupid shit you see online where people can just literally, you know, talk any sort of bollocks. It's disgraceful, really. I think, I think that's how, how I can sum, sum it up. But yeah, thanks, everybody. So yeah, very soon you'll be seeing glorious 4K videos. Whether or not every video will be in 4K, I don't know. Thank you for watching the stream, everybody. As I said, a big thank you to anybody that's donated at all at any point. You know, thank you to anybody that watches and subscribes as well. You help as well. But, you know, anybody that's donated, a big thank you because it's gone towards, you know, this massive step up in camcorder that I'm getting. Um, So, you know. I think that will sum up the stream, but maybe I will do a video at some point where I try to write a script. Maybe this will be a good idea of the 4K camcorder, um, where I explain why I think there's certain levels of thing you should not follow online tutorials for, and you should only listen to people who are qualified. To put it simply, you wouldn't listen to Dyatlov, would you, telling you how to run a nuclear reactor? You'd want to listen to people who are qualified nuclear technicians. And, you know, something like Chernobyl essentially happened because you had a system where important information on flaws in RBMK, re uh, RBMK reactors was covered up. People were, you know, promoted up due to incompetence or, you know, the bureaucracy kind of yes men kind of thing. And yeah, so there's, there's a reason Three Mile Island was a much smaller incident than Chernobyl, you know. It might be worth people who aren't really aware of all this stuff. Because although I'm not trying to say that some random person online is going to cause another Chernobyl when I really want to finish the stream off, but look up Three Mile Island, look at the amount of met radiation released due to all the safety measures, even when things went wrong, and like how they tackled Three Mile Island, um, which was a partial meltdown, and then look up Chernobyl. It becomes quite clear why with certain things you really should not fuck about with, you only should listen to people who really know what they're talking about. And like nuclear power, like a lot of these things, is where you should not cut corners and do things because it's cheap, basically. Right. Yeah. Good night, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed the stream. This has been quite a good one to do. Um, it's been very interesting and I've gone on way too long. But yeah, thank you, everybody. I've enjoyed it. Good night. <laughs>